Hi, welcome to the Quipster Film Review Podcast. My name is Vince Leo. I am the film critic for the website Quipster.net. I thank you so much for listening. I hope that you enjoyed this review. Check out my website if you want to read more. All of my written reviews are there. Over 3,850 reviews to choose from at Quipster.net. That's Q-W-I-P-S-T-E-R dot net. Today's review is going to be of the new animated R-rated comedy called Sausage Party. It's R-rated because of its strong, crude sexual content, pervasive language, and drug use. It runs only an hour and 29 minutes. The cast of vocal talent includes Seth Rogen, Kristen Wiig, Jonah Hill, Nick Kroll, Michael Sarah, Edward Norton, David Krumholtz, Salma Hayek, Bill Hader, James Franco, and Danny McBride. The directors are Greg Tiernan and Conrad Vernon, and the screenplay is credited to four people, Kyle Hunter, Ariel Shafir, Seth Rogen, and Evan Goldberg. In this film, the food items at the supermarket named Shopwells, they're excited about the prospects of the annual 4th of July sale because many of them are going to be chosen by the so-called gods, and that should mean humans, to go to the promised land of the great beyond, which means outside of the grocery store. The most excited of these foods are the members of a package of 10 very phallic-looking sausages, especially Frank, who's voiced by Seth Rogen. He becomes enamored of what he hopes will be, in the afterlife, his future companion, Brenda, voiced by Kristen Wiig. Brenda's one of a collection of eight vulvic-looking hot dog buns. As luck would have it, the god selects both of their respective packages in one cart. So they're going to be together, but a returned jar of honey mustard, voiced by Danny McBride, warns all of the food there of the horrors that await them all once they leave the store. I.e., they're going to get sliced and diced and cooked and consumed by these so-called gods. And that leads to a series of events that has Frank and Brenda and company out of the packages and on this crazy odyssey as they mill about within the store. So when it comes to Sausage Party, the funny bone, as I've often said, is in the arm of the beholder. Certainly, there is going to be a share of the viewing audience of Sausage Party who will come away loving the film and its brand of very rude, very crude, and largely distastefully vulgar humor. So, just a warning here, don't bring the kids. I think that that audience will primarily like it because they find those very aspects funny in and of themselves. However, you can tell by the tone of my voice, I suppose, that you will not be able to count me among them. I laughed only once possibly only to test if I still had the ability. And if you want to know what I laughed at, it's something so stupid, I'm kind of embarrassed I laughed at it. It's when the meatloaf sings, I would do anything for love. Now, while I do admire Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg and all of the rest of the people who came up with creating this very inventive new way to deliver their gleefully sophomoric brand of uh, bro-based comedy to the big screen... No amount of CG-infused character designs or cartoony environs can cover up the fact that this is merely the same recycled sexual, scatological, and stoner gags that these guys have made their bread and butter since day one. Despite its so-called mature rating, this is about as juvenile as films get these days. Now, Sausage Party is directed by Conrad Vernon, who also directed one of my favorite animated films, Shrek 2. He also directed Madagascar 3, not one of my favorites, but uh, Greg Tiernan is also the co-director. And you may be shocked to learn that Greg Tiernan has been primarily the director of many episodes of the very, very kid-oriented Thomas and Friends So a complete departure in tone from what he usually gives. It's based on a script from Rogan and Goldberg, along with Kyle Hunter and Ariel Shafir. All of these guys, with the exception of Rogan, penned the script for Rogan's vehicle the night before. So I guess if you like that movie, you're going to get a little bit more of the same. This one's definitely more vulgar. There appears to be a not terribly subtle allegory within Sausage Party that deals with a few important issues like sexual guilt, repression, class struggles, religious segregation. We see uh, a Woody Allen aping bagel named Sammy Bagel Jr., who is voiced by Edward Norton. Uh, We get Lavash, the Lavash, the Arab stereotype of a flatbread, 
there is this faith-based appeal of and subsequent disfavor for an afterlife. So some people might say this is a pro-atheist movie, I guess, in that regard. It uses the food as the metaphors. But outside of using these aspects as excuses for crass and, I guess, borderline obscene dick and fart jokes... There doesn't seem to be a prevailing social political itch to scratch on the minds of the film's creative team. Now, I've heard of films being labeled as food porn before. This one definitely takes the term to another level. Now, some viewers will consider Sausage Party as a spoof of popular animated films from the likes of Pixar and Disney. Certainly, Seth Rogen has said that the genesis of this film was that, you know, we we have films about toys and we have films about cars. What if we had films about food? That would be a real horrific film. I guess it's born from that idea, but I would caution viewers not to expect an out-and-out satire of the Pixar Disney formula. There are a few moments that may echo some of the things that you might see in one of those all-ages animated films, such as a musical number co-written by Disney regular Alan Menken. The movie does employ more of a kitchen sink approach to comedy, though. The makers of the film are willing to do and say pretty much anything to try to elicit laughs from the audience, who are primarily coming in fully expecting at least a dozen solid guffaws, maybe even more. Now, while I've alluded to the fact that those laughs did not come from me, perhaps because I watched the film completely straight and sober, unlike many of the film going public in the theater around me, There are also too many elements where the film is clearly trying to be so crude it's funny, but actually made me, as the viewer, sink into further depression. Now, one such story element that had me a little bit dismayed deals with a feminine hygiene product named, of course, Douche, who has this overamped temper. He's voiced by Nick Kroll. He has this very vengeful megalomania. He's meant to give the film the semblance of a villain somewhere in here, but that kind of gets lost through most of it. It's completely unnecessary. And whenever he's on the screen, he generally detracts from the semblance of the kind of bratty cheer that the rest of the film feels built upon. Rogan and company just think the fact that he's a douche is automatically funny. If that character were anything else in the store that had nothing to do with any kind of feminine hygiene or other thing that is so-called, you know, unmentionables, it would cease to have a reason to exist in this film. And that's emblematic of the film as a whole. It basically thinks that just putting something in the film that's usually not talked about in polite company is automatically going to be funny because it's mentioned. Along these lines, the faux, shocking, ethnic-based elements of the humor, they're really for anyone who just laughs at anything that's deliberately not politically correct. We get the fire water brand of whiskey bottle that's represented as a stereotypical engine smoking his peace pipe and spouting off wise words. We get this tequila bottle who's represented as a lusty mustachioed Mexican. Both of those characters, by the way, voiced by Bill Hader. We get Grits being a black character who hates the crackers We get a lesbian taco voiced by Salma Hayek, who wants Brenda's buns. And Brenda, of course, is a bun. And we get the German foodstuffs led by a Hitler-like sauerkraut who wanted to exterminate the juice. The juice, J-U-I-C-E. Just as with most components of Sausage Party, a little bit of this goes a long way. It gets very redundant very quickly. Had this been a 10-minute film... I think that this would be an instant hit among many on the internet. But at 90 minutes and having paid over $10 to see it in a theater, this kind of hit and miss nature of this comedy, plus the scattershot elements of the story, produces a few prolonged lulls such that I cannot really quite recommend this film. If you're somebody who enjoys F-bombs, just hearing an F-bomb into a sentence automatically makes it funny to you. No need to actually put any wit or cleverness into those words. Just throw an F-bomb in there. People are going to laugh. They're so liberally employed here, they almost feel forced in. Just shoehorn those F-bombs in there on the chance, hey, even if people don't think it's funny, we might even break some sort of world record for animated obscenities. If you guffaw at any instance in which racial or gender or sex-based stereotypes are exploited for laughs, independent of how clever they are. Just because they might be seen as something you shouldn't really say in public, automatically it's naughty and funny. If you relish any and every opportunity for someone to throw in a grossly imagined double entendre, by all means, seek out Sausage Party. 
because it's chock full of this level of raunch for raunch's sake. While the idea of Sausage Party is amusing. You know, certainly when I saw the trailer, it at least seemed different than anything that I've seen before. It delivered the premise. It just didn't deliver the laughs, at least not for me. So, you know, if you go in half-baked or fully baked or even a little tipsy, perhaps this is going to be a different experience for you. But for me, it just felt completely lacking. And the fact that I walked out of there not laughing was a problem. However, I will say Sausage Party does pack quite a crescendo for an orgiastic closing act, and that scene alone is possibly going to be just enough to have paying audiences walking out, shaking their heads and snickering at what they've seen, and talk about it to each other on the car ride home. Perhaps enough to forgive most of the scattershot and very repetitious nature of what has come before. So if you are cordially invited to this party full of sausages, just know that this invitation will come enclosed in an envelope that is persistently being pushed throughout. I'm going to give Sausage Party two stars out of four, and two stars on my scale means that it's lacking something vital that would keep it from being something that I actually could recommend to audiences. I think it's really lacking genuine wit and humor and cleverness, and, you know, like I said... Funny bones in the arm of the beholder. There's probably people right now who are shaking their fist at me and maybe at least one finger up. I don't know because I didn't find it as funny as they did. At the very least, don't take my word for it. Go seek out, just do a search on the internet for the Red Band trailer of Sausage Party. And if you find that funny, you'll probably enjoy the movie. If you watch it and don't think it's funny at all, just expect it's going to be about 80 plus minutes more of that And you probably will want to skip it. I know I did. Two stars for Sausage Party. Thanks, everyone, for listening. If you want to write to me, send me a flame if you so desire. You can do so by going to my website, quipster.net. You can find links to my Twitter feed and Facebook page as well. That's quipster.net, Q-W-I-P-S-T-E-R.net.